I, I think it's fair to say that when most people see this video, they think something along the lines of, ew, gross, or oh, the horrors. But there's a small fraction of us that see it and say, oh, that's really freaking cool. And an even smaller fraction of us that think, I want to try that. So that's what I'm trying to do in this video today. And I want you to follow along on this journey with me to creating necrobiotics. And that, that's fascinating, isn't it? Now that we call it necrobiotics, it sort of justifies our ability to reanimate dead animals, <laughs> right? So we call it necrobiotics and all of a sudden it's cool. And honestly, my conclusion of this is that this is a relatively easy process and something that you can do at home. Just call up Jeff Bezos and order a couple of pretty common objects and you can be a necrobiologist. That's a new word as well. In an interview with one of the authors of this paper, she said that this was something that worked the first try. The first time, right off the bat, actually. As a researcher, and as if you're a researcher as well, you probably know this, that doesn't happen. Nothing ever works the first try. There's always something wrong. But I think she was right. I did get it to work at least partially first try, and I'm sure she got it to work partially first try as well. I actually believe the authors this time. What? That's crazy. First try. What is going on? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. My first thought here is that I could just go around the house and look in small nooks and crannies to find some dead spiders and and do this project really ethically. But unfortunately, this whole idea revolves around a functional cir circulatory system and dead spiders do not have a circulatory system. Next, what I ended up finding was some spiders that were much too small. So we need to be able to get a needle into the body of the spider. And if you have shaky hands or the needle is too big, you won't be able to go into the body of a small spider. So you need a spider maybe the size of a quarter at minimum in order to get this to work. So you can go around your house and collect spiders like I did. And finding spiders around my house was an interesting experience. I was pretty scared to find that the first two places I looked, I found spiders. Ugh. But then after that, it took me several hours just to find three more spiders outside. I did wander around to the side of my house and I found this particularly large spider that ended up being pretty easy to catch. So now that I had my spiders, we needed a simple and ethical means of euthanasia. And the authors of the paper said they put their live spiders in a freezer for at least three days. I thought three days was kind of overkill, so I threw my spiders into the freezer, and I found that after maybe even just 10 minutes, the spiders were pretty cooked. So, you know, maybe <laughs> take this at your own risk. You really don't want to pull a spider out too early and open the tube and realize that the spider is not dead yet. So just make sure your spider is all the way dead. You might have noticed that dead spiders tend to curl up, their arms curl up. And this is not an active movement, right? Because the creature is dead. And so that's sort of their resting state to have their arms closed. And that's because a majority of the motion of the spider's leg is a hydraulic mechanism, which is super cool. And what this means to me is if you see a spider standing there, just standing still, it's not resting, really. It's sort of flexing as hard as it can. Maybe not as hard as it can, but it's flexing hard just to stand in that upright position. It's not a resting state. Like when we lay down or when we sit down, all of our muscles are relaxed or, or mostly relaxed at least. And that's not the case with spiders. They have to actively pump these hydraulic joints with fluid in order just to stand there. Spiders use something similar to blood called hemolymph to pump through their system, just like we have blood. But they also use that hemolymph as a hydraulic fluid to open and close their legs. This does not mean that spiders don't have ordinary muscles, which I have seen some of that information on the internet. 
they still do have muscles in their legs, but if they can get the majority of their muscular strength or the majority of the motion of their legs from this pumping force, then they can move the uh, muscles that compress that fluid into the center of their body so that their legs can be thinner, which is pretty, pretty neat, right? So they still have muscles, but they also have this hydraulic mechanism to open and close their legs. And this is exactly how a lot of our heavy machinery works. So if you've seen like the arm of a digger at a construction site or something like that, the hydraulic pump is in the body of the machine and the hydraulic forces are pumped through the arms of the machine. And that's how the arms of the digger are able to be so small, but the body has to be big to carry that uh, hydraulic pump and, and the engine to drive that hydraulic pump. Whereas if you had something more of a muscular system like we have and most animals have, then you would need more mass on the actual arm portion of the digger. Uh, and that would mean you need even more mass to support that massive arm. And so it's much more efficient to have the hydraulic pump separated from the mechanically moving component. Like I said, this did work for me first try, but it didn't work perfectly well. So you need a very, very small needle. I started off with a big needle and immediately found out that wasn't going to work. So I got a much smaller needle. I punctured the cephalothorax like the paper said to, which is not the abdomen, but the other body part of the spider. Punctured the cephalothorax, and I used some super glue to seal the wound up. And I only had the gel super glue at the time. This sucks. You really need to just get the crazy glue brand super glue, cyanoacrylate, which is used as a medical adhesive. So it's appropriate. It dries really quickly. And the fact that it's runny is actually a good thing because you can drop the super glue on the needle, let it flow down the needle or, or, coerce it to flow down the needle and form sort of a meniscus with the body of the spider. And that really seals the wound much better than trying to put glue around the hole perfectly. So you need these really small needles, 26 gauge needles uh, is what I used. If you can find smaller ones, that might be even better. Again, you need that runny crazy glue. I'll put the uh, link to the Amazon listing in the description below for these items. And the last two things you need are very steady hands. So don't drink a cup, cup of coffee beforehand and lots of trial and error. I know it said it, I know I said it worked the first try, but uh, you know, to get it to work well, you need to try more than once. You really want to be aware of the dangers here as well. These are very tiny needles that are designed to pierce skin. So be very careful with that. And you're working in close proximity with your fingers potentially, so don't stab yourself. Uh, and also you're working with this super glue, which will very quickly cure on contact with your skin. So try not to get that on your skin. And potentially you're hunting down venomous spiders <laughs> around your house. So do not let them bite you. And you know potentially that venom is still active uh, in the spider after it's dead. So my first attempt looked like this, and you can see that the there is motion in the spider, and I was really freaking out about how cool this was that it worked first try, uh, but it wasn't working very well, obviously. So on my fourth and fifth spiders, I got it working a little bit better. I did notice that in some of the spiders that I used uh, where I punctured the cephalothorax, I noticed that the abdomen was expanding and contracting, but the legs weren't. And so I figured I could puncture the abdomen and, you know, get the same fluid flow, but a much larger area. So, you know, you don't have to be as accurate with the with the puncture that you do. Um, and this worked, but sort of in a weird way. You know, I only tried this once, but it looks like the joint between the abdomen and the cephalothorax was the part that was moving, not the actual legs of the spider or not ma the majority of it wasn't the legs of the spider. It's great that we can get the spider's legs and, and body to move, but we need to have some function to actually call it necrobiotics and have a reason to euthanize these spiders. We need something that we can do with it. And the authors of the paper wanted to show this, you know, function by just being able to pick up an object and, and sort of show the grip strength and 
the structural integrity of this system. So they found that they could repeat the open enclosure of the legs something like hundreds of times. I might have to look back at the paper. Uh, but on top of that, they're able to pick up objects much more than the actual weight of the spider, which is really cool. So that was my major goal here to show that this is functional, that I can actually pick up an object. So I spent a lot of time trying to get the spider's legs to operate properly to actually grab something and pick it up. And I think this comes down a lot to the kind of spider that you have. So if you have a species of spider that lives under logs or something like that, maybe they don't have feet that are as grippy. Whereas if you use spiders that, you know, live on the side of your house or in a web or something like that, maybe their feet are stickier and can grip objects more easily. I think the spiders that I used uh, were definitely sort of hunting spiders, not web building spiders. And so their feet were not, they, they didn't seem very sticky to me and it, they had a hard time picking up objects. But when I finally had that moment where I got one of my necrobiotic spiders to pick up an object and put it back down reliably, I was again ecstatic. Pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. Yeah, pick it up. Yeah, put it down. Woo! Woo! This paper came out two years ago, and so it makes me pretty surprised that no one has followed up with this and made a necrobiotic tarantula, right? Because tarantulas are big. You could potentially control each leg individually without even very precise surgical operations. There's already robotics that are able to control eight-limbed creatures and algorithms for walking patterns of those eight-limbed creatures. And wouldn't it be much easier to move a syringe than move independent actuators for the leg? So just moving one syringe volume to control the entire leg rather than having a different hinge for all the sections of the leg, right? Like that would be pretty cool. And that's what I want to do next. If you work with tarantulas, if you have tarantulas or large spiders, um, <laughs> I'm hesitant to say this, but please send them to me, especially if you have some that are, you know, on the way out, like tarantulas don't live that long. So if, if you're a breeder or something and you have a male that's sterile and you don't need it anymore or something like that, contact me, please. Uh, my contact information will be in the description or leave a comment and I'll give you uh, my contact information get in touch. I would love to build something like that. That sounds like a really fascinating project. I've already reached out to a couple of tarantula breeders in my area, which I'm, is a sentence I, I never thought I would say. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of these tarantulas go for at least $200 each. So most breeders are not willing to uh, part with their spiders, even if they're at the end of their life, which is interesting to each their own. Hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is a really fun project. If you want to support work like this, you can subscribe to the channel, like the video, share this with your friends, share this, uh, you know, if you, if you end up making this, definitely share it with me. I want to see your necrobiotic spiders. That would be so cool to see uh, different species, different size and shape spiders um, used as necrobiotics. Leave a comment below for what you want to see in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.